On today's Off the Clock, we're continuing our two-part series. Today, we're gonna to talk about employees who have more experience. Sometimes <laughs> some folks may refer to them as older. I wouldn't refer to myself that way, Sarah, <laughs> would you? I definitely would not. No, so I, I, I prefer more experienced. We're gonna talk about succession planning, we're gonna talk about age discrimination, and yes, we are gonna answer your burning question we know you all have. Can I ask an older employee when they plan to retire? Welcome to Off the Clock, the webcast of employment attorneys at Miller Johnson, where we discuss what is happening in the HR world and provide practical insight and advice. I am not close to retirement age. Let, <laughs> let, let that be known, wide, wide. Far and wide. I don't know. I don't know yes. what it's like to be your age, so I don't know when people start <laughs> asking that question. For, I, those, <laughs> for those who didn't hear our episode, our last episode, I did say I'm one year older than Rebecca, and she this, likes to. This make is like that a pass fail. You're either older me. or you're not. <laughs> so <laughs> if you can qualify it all you want. Um, let's talk about first, let's just set the stage as to why people call us and ask us that question. Because the retirement question. Can yes. I ask an employee yeah. if they're planning to retire or when they're planning to retire? Those are two, actually two yes. very different questions. Uh, but why do some people pause and say, ooh, I'm not sure if I can actually ask that? It's because there's a general awareness of something called age discrimination, <laughs> yes, right? right? And a lot of people know that it is unlawful to make employment-based decisions uh, employment decisions, rather, based on age, Yes. right? Hopefully, everyone knows that now. If they didn't know it before, people tend to think about that as it relates to older workers, which federal law, by the way, <laughs> defines as anyone 40 and over. I know, it's so offensive. It really 40 is. is not old. That is offensive. I, I honestly, <laughs> I feel harassed <laughs> that at 40... <laughs> I am old and need to be protected by federal law. I do not. Anywho. Also, um, she's not 40. But anyway. <laughs> I, I am some uh, anniversary of it. <laughs> but so lots of people think about it in terms of older individuals yes. in the workplace. And I don't want to say tiptoeing, but being sensitive, being sensitive to that issue. For sure. But we do want everyone to know that age discrimination laws protect everyone of every age. Now, there True. are certain things you have to do when someone is over 40, like in severance agreements, certain extra waiting periods, et cetera. But anyone of any age can have an age discrimination claim. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy to think about? It is about? crazy. Um, so younger employees, 25-year-olds, the whole thing. And that 40 mark, this often confuses people. And there's case law on this. This was actually argued that 40 mark, it's not important when we get to an age discrimination mm -hmm. case. You can have a 40-year-old claiming that they were, or well, a 55-year-old, let's say, claiming that they were treated worse than a 45-year-old. Sure. Right? Even it doesn't have to are... be over and under 40. Right. And you can have a 30-year-old claiming they were treated worse because they were younger than a 55-year-old. Yes. Right? So keep in mind that anyone can have an age claim, and that means age should not be part of your decision-making process. Right when making important standing alone. decisions. That's exactly right. Standing alone. Now that <laughs> you, you, your mind went exactly where everyone's yes. mind went. Wait a second. Does that mean that I can't consider experience? Does that mean I can't consider salaries that often, right, right. Uh, sometimes can correlate with age and length in the workplace? So let's talk about those two because that's what comes up over and over. Those two in let's particular. Let's first talk about experience. Does okay. experience necessarily equate to age? No, obviously not, right? Because some people are at different places in their career, began them at different ages, et yep. cetera, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's not a clear correlation between experience for a particular job and age. Um, however, I will say this, and I know you're aware of this too, there's an interesting argument, um, and I think lawsuits have been filed on this theory too, regarding the age bracket. Yes. Right. You want the job posting that says, whatever the job is for, we'd like someone uh, with 10 to 15 years of experience. Right. So the 10, I don't have any heartache over. Do you? 
I don't. Arguably, it would exclude younger workers, right? Right. Workers who are in their so who can't possibly true. have ten years of right. experience. But as long as there's a business reason, and yeah. it's probably going to be the job warrants it that you need someone right. with experience. Then okay. that's not going to that's it's not going to raise my blood pressure, right? right. But it's right. the other end. It's 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 the Why other end of the bracket. It? Why why does it matter whether they have fifteen or sixteen or seventeen or quite frankly twenty five right. years of experience for this position? If they have enough experience to do the job, why are you trying to cap it? The overqualified candidate. That's exactly right. right. So there's so there has been recent litigation coming out of the idea that that's really just a subterfuge for age discrimination. Right. It's yep. a way of saying we want somebody with this level of experience, but not. Too much. <laughs> too much. Too much experience. So that's an interest. So it I would say area. employers need to be aware of that and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. um, do you, Rebecca, think, though, that there, that there are situations in which an employer, a, a business, could legitimately say, we don't want somebody with too much experience? Because I, I hear do. that a lot. They're overqualified, to yes. your point. They're overqualified for this position. I do think there are legitimate business reasons that have nothing to do with age. So the point here is you don't have to open up your positions and hire people who are, quote unquote, overqualified and may then also, by correlation, be older, even though that's not the intent. But you better think through what the reasons are yeah. if there's a legitimate reason. I just think it's overdone. I think excluding people who are overqualified is just overused as a way to make life easier because you have 100 applications and you only have time to interview 10. Right. And Be it's careful just a, it's about just an term. easy way, right, to 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 get your the, the the universe of people you might be interested in lower. But there could absolutely be reasons. For instance, if you've experienced high turnover when yeah, you hire overqualified people that, that are using you as a just a landing point, mm -hmm. right, until they find something better, that could be a reason, but that can often be addressed in an interview too. Right. Of course, there can be salary demands, but that can also be addressed. You may be making assumptions that people that are more qualified are going to have salary demands that are too high, but that's just an assumption that may or right. may not be wrong, right? Yeah, I I mean, I would much prefer and encourage employers instead of rejecting applicants or candidates because they're quote unquote overqualified because again that's becoming a subterfuge for age discrimination instead mm -hmm. instead say what you just said yeah. right we've selected somebody else or we're not selecting this person because their salary demand is too high right. or or their salary expectation is too high or we don't based on our conversations during the interviews, we don't think this person is likely to stay in this role. So we're not interested in training them, bringing them in and training them, knowing that we're really just, they're using us. Now, salaries. Let's talk about salaries. This often yes. comes into play with reductions in forces and layoffs for economic reasons. It turns out... <laughs> That when uh, certain organizations or, bus or business lines, departments within an organization, are told to cut labor costs by X, and they look at their, they then look at their highest wage earners, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> in that group, and oftentimes they can be the older workers, right, because they have more experience and they've been there longer and they've had regular raises, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They've, they've just they've there is sometimes a correlation, mm -hmm. right, in a certain group, depending on the specific industry and all right. that. So we get the question, well, I really need to eliminate the highest wage earners, right? Because But they're all over the age of 55. Can yeah. I do that? Yes. And if it really is salary, the courts have said that's okay. But tread carefully. Yeah. That's a time when you want to call your legal counsel, right? When you're yeah. doing a reduction in force and you're, you are not considering any unlawful factors. But when you look at how it lands, it makes you stop and pause. If you're pausing for more than 10 seconds or so, it's probably time to... To call your to lawyer. And the key policy. there, in my view, one of the key considerations is consistency. Yeah. Right? So are you, in one area, choosing based on salary, but in other areas, choosing based on other factors and things like that? So we right. want to make sure that if it truly is compensation, that's the yes. controlling factor here, that that's true and consistent in the right. way it's being applied. So age discrimination works kind of sort of like all other discrimination, right? There, You can't consider it as, as, a, as the reason or, or a main factor in an employment decision. But there are other things that can sometimes start looking and feeling a little bit uh, like it, like experience and salary. So that's a great time to pause. Uh, and if it, But if it is truly not 
about age, yep. right? And you have a legitimate sure. business reason. You're Absolutely. Be. Okay. All right. So that's age discrimination. Uh, we've seen cases where there are accusations that uh, supervisors, managers, etc., will bully someone into retiring or keep mentioning retirement, etc. And that is interpreted as animus or, or dislike or towards an older retirement. worker in I the mean, yeah. workplace. And so that has led people to start getting a little nervous sometimes, right, right, about asking, are you planning on retiring or when are you planning on retiring? And this, we're getting this question a lot. I think this is definitely a theme right now because everyone's talking about succession planning, yeah. right? Have you found that too? It's I've just, gotten a lot of the questions. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, everyone wants succession planning. And, and succession planning, I found, have fallen into kind of two buckets. One is just, we just want it for everyone, like at least in leadership roles, right? We want the CEO, right, and the direct reports. And then there are the key employees. Let's face it, some of our most important people are not right. in the C-suite, right? Like your example that you mentioned to me earlier, right? The, the maintenance the tech. The maintenance tech, right, that's yeah. been working on that particular machine on your production line. Yes. For 30, 40 years right. and knows every single Literally bolt Literally 30 to 40 and years. And can get right. that line back up in seconds the way no one else can. Right. Right, and now they're 62 or 63, yes. right? So so those are kind of two categories, like the key employee uh, that if you lose, right, yikes, because of all that knowledge, and then just like the leadership position. Like you need someone there planning. making those decisions right. and at the helm. Just general succession right. planning, right? Right. And then in a key element for both of those, right, is um, planning. And you can't plan if you don't know when something is going to occur, right? So for our, <laughs> for our HR folks who are facing either one of those right now. You make it sound so obvious. <laughs> are, Something are, about the way. Who, are, who, are, who have identified themselves or they're being asked to formulate succession planning for these positions, right? Yeah. They are immediately in a position to have to know something very important, which is when somebody is going to retire, right? right? Which is causing them, I know for both of us, to reach out to us and say, can I, can I ask? How do I talk to somebody about this? Um, and so well, I, I will say this, right? You know I'm a big communications person. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm probably going to say first, which is the way you ask the question is so yeah, incredibly makes... important. If you just ask kind of out of the blue, what are your retirement plans? That person often hears, right? It's like the Charlie Brown voice <laughs> often hears, <laughs> you're getting old. How much longer are we going to have to pay you to be here? Right. right. That's often what they hear. Some some identification first that they're getting older, and second, when when is your employment going to end? And yeah. that sends the wrong message, and often Absolutely. a complete incorrect message. It's often right. quite the opposite. So the communication is key. So I the wouldn't... question per se. Yes. Let's just answer the question directly. The question per se is it's not, not unlawful. unlawful. It's the intent, but the I manner, will tell you, the I've totality seen, of yes, the circumstances. Lots and lots of age discrimination. Sometimes. Lots and lots of age discrimination cases. Yeah. Couched in the idea that the evidence of the age discrimination was that that employee was asked when they're going right. to retire. But to be fair, there's usually other evidence as well. So it's the totality of yeah. the circumstances, yeah. and that can be one. One right. thing, yeah. uh, and the totality of the circumstances, not just of everything that's happened to that employee in the last year or so of their employment, but the, the way in which it was asked, so it can make a really big So how do we difference. ask? How do we ask to not create that potential risk? Well, first of all, there should be a legitimate business reason to ask. Yeah. Okay. Because it, 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 if there's not, then it does start looking like right age discrimination and bullying, and yeah. especially if you do it in a moment of anger, right? Like how when how much longer are you going to be here anyway? Right. right. Obviously, that's a different problem. Am I going to have to fire you, or are you going to retire? Right. Then when there's just... evidence, when it's right. happened, then there's evidence that right. at the leadership, uh, at the leadership roles, someone's given the instruction. We need succession planning. You work on the equipment tech. You work with, the, you know, so we can show. No, this was. There is a business reason to be doing this, right. right? Because we need to know how to fill roles, right? And then how we ask someone the moment, the mood, <laughs> how we frame the conversation. Sure. I love your idea about telling them why we're asking them, right? Sure. So it's not out of the, because out of the blue, you're right. We fill in the narrative, right? Yeah. 
Because if we don't know why you're asking, the maintenance sector does not know that leadership has had these meetings about succession planning, right? <laughs> right? So uh, setting the mood, not the mood, but that sounds romantic almost. So that's yeah, not what right. we want to do at all. I'm not sure that's what we want to no, do, right? No, no mood, no mood. Like. But we want to the set the intent mm -hmm. and the tone. You are very important right. to this organization, right? You are wonderful, right? We hope you're here uh, a long time, but we, you know, spoiler alert, right? No one works here for 300 years. <laughs> so do you, ha do you know what, you know, what are your plans? Do you know yet what right. your plans are? Right, that's a completely different situation than just walking up to someone. Agreed. And and, um, and asking them. And what if this happens a lot? Probably more often than the alternative. What if the response is, "I don't know." That's usually the we answer. haven't decided. It, my my experience is that is usually yeah. the answer. Yeah. Even and quite frankly, even if that person thinks they might know, they're <laughs> unlikely. They're, they're not ready to commit to it right. and announce a retirement. It, it, it feels to them that if they tell the employer in that moment that they're announcing a retirement date right. to which they're going to be tied, and then what if things don't work out? What if their 401k goes down and they don't <laughs> want to retire? Or what if, right? what if they change their mind? Yep. So that is usually, my experience is that's usually the answer. And so what I if, don't know. What if an employee does? What if they're in a key, key, one of those key positions and they right. really don't know, but you're the HR manager and you've been told you need to, to figure, figure it, it out, out and get and figure out if this person leaves that we're when this person leaves eventually because everyone does eventually. What does that mean for us yeah. and how are we going to be okay? So, I think it's important to point out, right, that first we're we're assuming this is somebody that we we are not trying to drive out the door, right? This right. is an important, and we'll talk about that person in a minute, but um, <laughs> that it's not, it, it's not so much that HR person needs to know the date right now. It's more that the HR person needs notice Correct. ahead yep, of time. I agree completely. So that if that person doesn't know today when they're going to retire, that's okay, that's fine. But how can mm -hmm. we then position ourselves to be certain that we will get six months, three months, a year notice ahead of time so that we can then do what we need to do to recruit and fill the right. position and make sure the important knowledge is passed on to the next person. Maintenance tech, I love the example of the maintenance tech because that's not the position that everyone necessarily thinks about when they think of succession planning. Right. But it's a great example of employees who typically work at a production facility often for decades yeah. and have knowledge that nobody else has right. and a position for which it's really hard to recruit. Right. So, um, and the line goes down without them there. That's exactly No one right. can just fill in, right? If they don't know how to fix the machine, yes. right? You're, you're done. You're production yes. zero for yes. the day. Yeah. So the most- Chills down my spine just thinking about I'll it. I'll be real honest. This is a situation in which I think the most effective strategy has to do with financial incentives. Money talks. Money talks. And if Very it's critical persuasive. to the organization that that person provide notice, threatening them <laughs> does you no good. Right. Because what are you going to do? What when are you going to do? Right? Tell them you better give us six months' notice or right. three months' notice or a month's notice before you leave. Um, there's really no practical recourse <laughs> if they don't. Do it, and your right. operations folks. You can tell you your your operations folks that maybe you fired them, and they're not going to get their PTO buyout or something. But right. other but than exact. that, that doesn't help them. Yeah, and they're exact. Do so they care if they're getting their PTO? No, <laughs> probably right. not. So that's unhelpful. Right. Instead, tying financial incentives to that person providing notice yep. before they're going to leave working with you and that succession mm -hmm. planning, ensuring that they're passing down that information, et cetera, I found to be incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've helped employers with mm -hmm. deferred comp yeah. plans. Uh, it doesn't even have to be as complicated as a deferred comp plan. It can be a, what we call a stay bonus or a, right. or a or retirement bonus. A retirement bonus. Yeah. yeah. If you um, give us a year's advance notice before your retirement, Nelly. You'll receive a retirement bonus of right X. 
Right. And w- at what other time does somebody want money more than when they're going to retire? Right? Yes. When you're not in need. The most nervous moment in your life when you're not getting a paycheck anymore. And am I going to have enough to pay the bills this month? Right. Yeah. Without that salary. Uh, that can be very, very valuable. I found it to be very successful. Mm-hmm. And to be clear for our listeners, this is an arrangement into which you could enter with that employee now. You could have a signed yeah. agreement now in place, even though they don't have a date yet. Yeah. Right? It's just the notice. What you really want is the notice, yes. to your point. Yeah. You don't, Yeah. if they don't have a date now, what you want is to ensure you have mm-hmm. the notice. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great tool to help with that. I think when we talk about retirement and the conversations we have with workers about retirement. I think one area where we get close uh, to some age discrimination issues is when the employer is trying to encourage a person to retire. Right. And I think that was what you were getting to earlier. Yeah. Do do you know when you're going to retire, sir? No, I haven't really. It'd be great. Uh, if you, if you could retire uh, in the next uh, and you know what year why they or sometimes two, do that I, you know, is yeah. because I, I've seen this lots of times. Employer is less than an enthused about perhaps the job performance of that employee. Yep, that employee's been with the organization for a long, long time. They really don't want to fire the person, but they're willing to hang on <laughs> until the person can retire if they only if it's only a year or if two. If they only knew how long that might be. Right. Right. I completely agree with you. It's that's a where you get into trouble. Management problem. And that's where you get the lawsuits, right? Yeah. In which the person is eventually fired for job performance, but there had been these previous right. conversations about when are you going to retire, et cetera. So, yes. When someone right. feels badgered by that question, yes. right? Incur- like you're trying to get them to quit essentially or yes. retire, that's when we can run into trouble. So, let's, let's talk about that. So, let's take, we've, up until now, we've been talking about the employee that we, want to stay, right? Right. Incentivized to stay and provide us notice. notice. Right. Um, Let's talk about the employee whose job performance has deteriorated Mm -hmm. or is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Um, And the employer thinks probably has something to do with age. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe employee has physical restrictions that they didn't have anymore. Their mental acuity wasn't quite what it was before. Um, how do we manage those job performance concerns? This is one of those things that's easier said than done. Yeah. Right. But I don't care. You still have to do it. (laughs) It's not like whenever I say something, it's a little easier said than done. I'm like, well, yeah, everything is easier said than done. Literally everything. (laughs) But (laughs) really dressed in the morning is easier said than done. Especially Eating lunch is easier said than done. Right. Okay. So yes, but. Okay. So I know that. I know the reaction, but uh, it is what it is. All right. The way you said it is exactly the way clients present it. And it's perfect. And I would just encourage you to stop where you said and. And for those that don't want to rewind. (laughs) It's the part about age. It's the part, (laughs) yeah. You talked about performance issues, you know, either deteriorating or not meeting. And then you said, and we think it might be because of age. Right. And then you listed right. some other things that everything with the and we think it might just cut that off and don't let your minds t- go to that second step. The reality is this is a performance issue like any other. Mm-hmm. And where employers get themselves tripped up is when they go down the and. I think that's right. So if I, you have someone who's not meeting your expectations, mm-hmm. you explain it to them. Right. You ask the magic question. What is it? Right. How oh. can we help? Right. How can we help you How be successful? Help? Sir? And the if they continue thing, not to meet your expectations, you handle right. it the way you'd handle it. I agree with everything you just said. I would add this as well. Um, I'm, I can think of lots of situations in which it wasn't just any other job performance situation because it's an employee who has been doing this job for a long, long time in very successfully doing the job for a long, long time. That's not to say we go to age, right. but that's to say from an HR standpoint, that may require more conversations mm-hmm. and 
direct assistance right. than your typical job performance situation. Oh, I agree. Right? It's it, totally, I, I mean, that's a, it's, I'll just say it out loud. It's a really tough one for HR folks, right? For HR folks. It, it is. It just is. They should put their ADA hats on. Right. We're not going to go, this is not an ADA episode. But very similar. But if someone, when we say it's because of age, it's not really because of age. It's because of something physical. Even when it, we do say age, right? right? It's actually a physical change in the brain, which is physical, mm -hmm. right? Or in the body. Yeah. And it's, or, it might be more prevalent in older people, mm -hmm. But cognitive impairment, right? Other thing. But it is a physical right. disability, right? And so just, just think about it that yeah. way and put on your ADA reasonable accommodation sure. process hat on, right? And work through that and don't make assumptions. It's because of age because it's irrelevant right. whether it's because of age or not. It's completely irrelevant to the analysis and the process. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, Sometimes it's also because they're being asked to do new things as part of their job too. Yeah. And they're oh, yeah. things that they're that may or may not be familiar with, mm -hmm. um, may have less experience with. Yep. Um, you know what I'm gonna say, and that's technology. <laughs> Don't make assumptions that any employee can or cannot use technology, but that does seem to be a theme that can come up over and over again with somebody that has done their job a certain way right. and is now being asked to completely reframe how they do it because of new technology, et cetera. Right. So we're gonna, I mean, certainly be engaging with that employee. Right. Um, what I will say, just circling back to the retirement question, the most important thing is when this is happening, you don't start with when you're going to retire. Okay. <laughs> it, it never no, comes up in a job no, performance conversation. No, right. Exactly. Right. Well, I, I will say this. I have had lots of situations in which, um, job performance concerns like this, mm -hmm. they're, they're through conversations. They do reach an understanding right. yeah, oh, that it's sure. time to transition and you can get there. It's Sometimes. usually the employee who raises yes. it. It should be the employee who raises it in the context of a job right. performance conversation. Yes. Maybe they are starting to get frustrated. It's no fun to do a job yeah. and not be good at it. Let's right. be honest. Uh, it doesn't feel good. That's right. Uh, and That's right. so the employee themselves, if they, in the course of these com job performance conversations, say, you know what? I was going to retire a few years from now anyway. I just, I think I'm just going to bump it up because I don't want to, I don't want to deal with this. That's right. Right? Anymore. Then you can, okay, well, if that's what you'd like. You know, we can help work through that and, you know, but it should be their, uh, their suggestion, not yours. The one you're going to retire the door. should yes. be in the context that we described at the beginning of this episode, right. not out of anger and not in part of a conversation right. about poor performance. Agreed. That's Agreed. when you get yourself yes. tripped up. The other way really, really good people get themselves tripped up is assuming that with age comes certain things. Right. Right. And stereotypes come from places, right, where sometimes they are often true and because they, they'll relate it to their own parents' experiences or even their own experiences. Right. Like, I know I'm having more trouble with this, so I assume that person is also having more trouble. Really try to slow down that stop and think and don't make assumptions right? That because of someone's age, they're going to have sure. trouble with the new technology or they're going to have trouble. Right. Let that person tell you, right? Or, let, or their, or their boss, or their you. boss right. tell yes. you, do not assume. Yeah. Right. Because there yeah. are people that defy stereotypes. All right. Anything else? I think we've covered enough. For okay. Today. <laughs> I think that's enough for today too. We can talk about aging a lot. <laughs> we? All right. We'll talk about our aches and pains after the camera is turned All off. All right. Awesome. Okay. Bye, Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye-bye.